Hey, Calvary family, hey, it's great to be with you today. Um, I just want to share a devotion with you about false narratives. And I got to tell you, it's like what I'm sharing, um, I don't see any of it kind of going around or anything like this. It's just a great reminder. So I'm not pointing at anything. But, but you know, in our land, of course, in our culture, there's lots of false narratives. People grab onto them all the time. Um, and everybody thinks like they have the right one. And I'm not going to try to solve that or anything like that. I'm just going to throw out there a stance that we as followers of Jesus should be making. And actually, so so that's, that's what I want to do. Um, I've been doing a reading in um, Joshua. I'm going through the Bible a program, and I'm in Joshua 22, and I just read this, and I thought it was just so interesting. So um, Joshua 22, the tribes of Israel are now in the promised land. They have finished appropriating the promises that God had for them in regarding the land. They had, in other words, conquered the land. Two and a half tribes of Israel settled on the east side of the Jordan. So Reuben, Gad, and half-tribe of Manasseh settled on the east side of the Jordan, but they crossed over the Jordan to help the other tribes conquer their land. And then after there was peace in the land, they're ready to go back to their side of the Jordan. And that's where Joshua 22 picks up, okay? They're going back into the land that, that, is, that is theirs. Now, when they do it, they go over and they, um, they build an altar to God. And here it is in verse 10. It says this, um, so Joshua 22, and when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is um, in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, those on the east side, um, built an altar there by the Jordan, a great, impressive altar. So that's just like what they did is build this, this altar, okay? Was, and I imagine it was very similar to the one that was in Shiloh where they worshiped, where the worship of God was going on, where the tabernacle is, okay? Now, go on, verse 11. Now, the children of Israel heard someone say, that's a bad thing right there, okay? When you hear someone say and you act on it. But anyway, children of Israel heard someone say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan in the region of Jordan on the, um, on the children of Israel's side. So, so someone said something, someone else, and someone else is passing on information. And some of the information is absolutely correct. But there's a narrative that gets spun along with it, some interpretation of the facts, right? And this is what goes on. It goes on, it says verse 12. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered together at Shiloh to go to war against them. And so here they are, like the, when the other tribes of Israel hear about this altar building, they have this narrative spun and they're going like, we've got to gather together and go to war against them. So their, their narrative is something along these lines. These two and a half tribes are splitting off. They're going to go worship God their own way or they're going to worship another God or something along those lines. And so the rest of Israel is like, okay, it's our job and we've got to go out and condemn them and teach them a lesson type of thing. Rebuke them, right? Show them how wrong they are and how right we are. And so the, you read the whole passage. It's really an amazing passage. So the um, priests and some of the leaders lead. Phineas is the leader of those who's the high priest of the time. All the armies of Israel are in tow, like we're going to destroy you. Um, and so they believe this false narrative. In verse 16, we have Phineas speak up. He says, thus says the whole congregation of the Lord. What treachery is this that you have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord in which you've built yourselves an altar that you might rebel this day against the Lord? And he goes on and he's laying it on all thick and a whole thing that they believe. And there's this big long rant about what they believe and this narrative that they've latched onto. They were quick to believe the worst about others even those who were their brothers and sisters and friends, people that they walked with, I mean, they fought alongside and all of that stuff. They were quick to believe the worths and that belief led them to be willing to wipe them out. 
at least make an example of them. And, you know, and they even had biblical support, too. I mean, they, you know, they didn't just do this. They go, verse 20, this is some of the stuff Phineas said. Don't you remember Achan, son of Zerah, how he committed a trespass in the, of the accused thing, and the wrath of God fell upon the, the children of Israel, or the congregation of Israel, and, and that man did not perish alone in his iniquity. And they go on, they have other examples, too, and PR, and all, all these other things. So, you really interesting thing. You know, um, Phineas accuses them. He doesn't confront them. And there's a world of difference between the two. Some of you have been recipients of accusations before. I know I, know I have. Last year at this time, it was, it, was, it was a tough time. But like, just accused of things. How do you tell the difference between accusation and confrontation? Wait, well, read the rest of the, pro, the, the passage and you'll see. The two and a half tribes, they respond to Phineas and with all the tribes of Israel that are ready to kill him, right? They're like, you have it all wrong. I mean, you're just believing a false narrative. You didn't ask us. It was true to you, got it, but it's all wrong. We built this altar to remind everyone that we're part of Israel. No sacrifices are ever going to be sacrificed on us. And they told him over and over and over again. I mean, it's almost comical how many times they tell him this in the passage. Why'd they have to do that so many times? Because false narratives are hard to shake. And here's how you know it's an accusation and not a confrontation. When Phineas, who represents the group, hears what was actually going on, no one apologized. Like, no one apologized. You just read it. No one was like, oh, you know, sorry, guys. You know, like, we should have given you the benefit of a doubt. We should have believed the, the better thing first before we jumped to the wrong conclusion. All that. No, no one said it. No one said, no one said, we're sorry we judged you. We're walking in judgmentalism. Um, no one said, hey, we were in sin and we sinned against you. Could you pl- forgive us, would you please? No, all they did was go, Okay, that meets our agreement. Carry on. And so anyway, it's just a great reminder. Again, I encourage you to read the whole passage. I think it's a great lesson in there. Um, it's a good reminder for us, like, especially as we're not seeing this kind of stuff, right? God's doing this great work among us, and we just don't want to allow the enemy to have a foothold. Believe the best about other people, not the worst. What's the worst that's going to happen if you believe the best about people? But they might prove you wrong. Look, the scripture tells us love keeps no records of wrong. It believes the best. None of us get everything right in this journey, but we, but we journey together, right? So let's encourage one another. Let's build one another up. Let's cut off the false narratives that get spun by just going directly to the source. Let's ask. Like, like, like when we believe something like uh, about someone or, or there, there, something's wrong there, let, just go ask the person. Sin. Ask, you know, um, and if we've been believing something wrong, go and repent to the person, not just carry on. Look, we are the we are the redeemed people of God. We have a higher calling than that of the world. Let's just continue to watch God do amazing things among us and provide him the ground and the attitudes of the heart where he can work. Blessed by this church, blessed being part of this church. Carry on, you guys, um, in following after Jesus. Love you all.